Um, of course, I'm standing on the back of some very big names uh, in this field who uh, showed, pointed the way. Uh, this is new data, unpublished. I was allowed to share this from Bruce Cassander's lab. Uh, he and I are, re are infecting not the neurons here, but the retinal pigment and epithelium cells, RPE, and these give rise to uh, the photoreceptors. And these degrade over time, particularly in macular degeneration. And what Bruce has found is that he can actually restore the morphology and the function of these cells and restore eyesight back to a young state, similar to what happens when you rejuvenate neurons in the eye as well. The system uh, in the lab now that we're doing is more human. We have inducible human neurons uh, where we can differentiate them both into flat cultures and three-dimensional. And we do pro-aging with ice and reversal with OSK typically. Okay. I'll give you some examples of what we do. And this is work uh, mainly by Xiao and Jay in the lab. We grow the nerves on these little culture dishes that can sense electrical signals. Uh, when we have a control induction of uh, no OSK, uh, there's not very good electrical uh, firing. But when we rejuvenate them uh, with uh, the OSK treatment, uh, just for a short amount of time, this just takes a little over a week, we see that there's a, a um, great induction of function, um, and it continues out the longer we go. This is day 50 that you're seeing on the right. So that's just neurons. That's human neurons. We've got Alzheimer's patient neurons as well. Uh, we can make these into little uh, brain organoids. You can see here that we can turn on all of the three Yamanaka factors that we like in these organoids, which have a similar brain structure to ours. Great models um, for human aging. We can age these forward and get them to take on inflammatory and senescent signatures, which I think will be a useful model. Um, in terms of reversal, uh, we've done this in mice as well. Uh, we can now deliver the OSK system into uh, various places in the brain, whole brain, or in this case on the right, the excitatory neurons. And in both cases, we get an improvement in learning in these old mice, uh, which is what I think might happen, we've, we might find out as a field is that Diseases of old age, particularly uh, in the brain I'm thinking of, like Alzheimer's, if you make the, the brain young, then the diseases just go away because most of these diseases of aging are caused by aging. I mean, it's obvious to a lot of us, but to the rest of the world, it's not. Um, so I want to thank the people who made this possible. Uh, there's a large group. The, the clinical trial group is at Brigham and Women's Hospital. There are four other clinical trials that are ongoing. There's one actually for Alzheimer's disease that's starting to recruit. There's one, um, well, I won't, won't say the whole lot, but they're, they're interesting ones. Um, you can see that we've got collaborators both for exercise physiology, the hormones, and this is um, the MIB 636 group at Metro Biotech. Uh, here we have uh, the people in my lab that helped uh, or did major contributions. I want to point out the work of Jay, who did the Ice Mouse um, and Matoshi. I want to thank uh, everyone, really, but uh, I want to focus on, um, I mentioned Xiao Jian um, for the OSK work, uh, Yuan Cheng Lu, who left the lab after he published, rightly so. Uh, he's uh, not listed, but he was the first author on that Nature paper. Um, and I also want to point out uh, Chris, who's doing reversal of senescence, uh, Joao, who's uh, working uh, on a lot of the mouse projects. Um, I could go on. I won't uh, do that, but I do want to thank Patrick. Well, I probably didn't mention enough. He was the one that came up with this idea to do the time seek clock. Um, so many collaborators, it's impossible to thank everybody. These are the highlights, and I am so grateful for their uh, advice, uh, reagents, and, uh, and friendship over the years. And the people who uh, supported the work financially have been amazing too. Um, so I'll stop there and take any questions. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much, uh, David. We have a question here in the front from one of our Inspire ambassadors. They're the high school students that are involved in the ARDD organization. Hi, my name is Andrea. Um, I was just wondering, so you, you said that you used three of the four Yamanaka factors when looking at uh, eyesight rejuvenation. Have you tested any other combinations of these Yamanaka factors? We tested all combinations. Um, and we needed three, uh, four uh, worked as well, but we were concerned about the loss of cellular identity, so we left CMIC out, uh, and those three are necessary. If we just do one 
or two combinations, uh, it, it did not work. And if we gave them individually in different viruses, uh, it still didn't work. So it seems like we need to package them into the same AAV, three of them, put them in a polycystron and get those in. Um, were there slight changes? Maybe, but the, the big difference was when, when we put in all three. Now, we, we were trying for years different factors. So we tried Nanog, and that didn't work very well. It was pretty toxic. Um, and I think, I mean, it sounds like we just tried something and it worked, but it was actually many years of Wan Chang's uh, efforts to find this particular combination. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, it's quite late here. and We have, we have a couple of questions. Well, sorry. It's late for me, I guess. It's a couple of questions in the back. Yeah. Hi, uh, I was wondering if you also tested the data that you showed in RPE cells in pathological conditions, either genetic or chemical. Oh, uh, yeah, so it's been done in a, uh, a mouse model of macular degeneration um, with the, the iodide model, if you're familiar with it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it, uh, it works well in that situation. Okay, cool, cool. Thanks. There's another one from Lawrence. Hi, David. Uh, I don't know if you can see me. It's Lawrence Ayan from VitaDAO. I am wondering about the, the time seek, if you can talk a bit about the implications there. Uh, how would it look like for the consumer? What does this enable? What are the uh, downsides as well? Uh, yeah, I don't know of any true downsides. Uh, the cost is the main thing. So what we do is we, we barcode each, each person's sample we run them through the same sequencing reaction. There's also an enrichment step that I didn't mention. Uh, and so it, it currently costs us less than, a, you know, basically a few dollars, less than five dollars per sample. And that's just on the bench here, not high throughput, not optimized. So we think we can get the test down to really low amounts. And for the consumer, that's of course a benefit. Um, it, this technology is licensed to a company that next year will, if all goes well, provide a product to consumers um, to try this out, but I wouldn't release that until we've shown that it works well. We've done, I think, a couple of thousand people so far. We have 10,000 samples waiting to be tested and about 250,000 people on the wait list. So we will use those numbers to aim to get a really good clock and not put it out there at all if it doesn't work. I'm assuming the cost doesn't include the, the logistics, right? So it would only make sense in, in batches with shipping or something like that? Yeah, yeah. The shipping will be more expensive than the cost of the test uh, eventually. But yeah, that, that's just the cost of the reagents and the, the sequencing, yeah. Great. One more down here. Uh, hello, David. Uh, so my question is, have you ever tried to uh, combine also fasting and calorie reduction as a synergistic effect in your reprogramming with the ammonica factors? Uh, we have not. We have not. We, we have tried a few chemicals in combination, and we're still working on that. But no, I think it's a Good idea. Um, it, it may be that uh, some of the genes that I talked about today could be involved. Um, we'll try it. Thank you. All right. Very cool. Thank you so much, David. That was a fantastic and inspiring talk. We're looking forward. And uh, we're, looking, we're looking forward to seeing you here uh, next year.